bit about how we maintain the mound, um, whether it be a pitcher's mound, a bullpen, or even your home plate batter's box areas, same clay in all those areas and same uh, basic procedures on how we maintain those areas. The first step in doing this is we got to get all the loose material out of the, the uh, holes that the, the players have created from, from throwing off this mound. So we just use a simple uh, swish broom and get all that loose material out. The reason we want to get all this material out is we are going to add more clay to this mound and we need those clays to be able to bind together uh, as strong as possible. So we don't want any kind of barrier between the old clay and the new clay we're going to put in. So that's the reason we really want to sweep these areas out. And then if, if necessary, if it's been a long hot day, we're going to add a little moisture to this old clay as well. <clears throat> Just to get it a little bit wet and soft again so that it's ready to stick uh, and adhere to the new clay we're going to put in. So once we get this watered, we're going to let it sit for just a few seconds and let that water be absorbed into that clay. And once it's absorbed, um, you're going to go ahead and add your new clay, uh, which is obviously the same material that was originally in here. And what we're doing is just, just spreading out a new layer of this clay, filling all the holes and all the low spots um, as we go. Once that's in there, we're going to tamp those areas and tamp that clay and actually compact it into that original base clay. You'll notice our tamp is wrapped with a plastic bag. And the reason we do that is so that the clay doesn't stick to our tamp. Um, if you wrap plastic around that tamp, it'll, it won't stick and you can get a nice clean tamp each time down. So we're going to tamp and add more as necessary um, just to get that surface back to being as as perfect and as smooth and flat as we can get it. Once that's accomplished, we'll come back in with a little bit more water and kind of adhere all that clay together. And continue tamping. I can almost see how that clay is really bonded and almost melted into that old clay. Once we get that all done, we're going to come back in with a little a lupo or a hula ho and just scrape any imperfections out of that clay, almost like you're molding a pot or, or something like that. We can come back in and just sculpt that clay and get any excess out of there. We don't want to build it up too high um, and get too much clay in there, but at the same time, we don't want to add uh, too little. So we really want to get that uh, graded right back to where it sh should be. Still talking about our mound maintenance, we're going to go ahead and patch the uh, landings area where the pitcher's front foot will land during a game. And it's the same method as we used up along the, the pitching rubber itself. We've wetted the, the base clay again, and now we're just adding clay um, to those hole areas and, and leveling it back up so it's back on grade. Once that's all accomplished, we're going to lightly tamp those areas back in and get it back to grade. While he's tamping that, You'll notice we have tarps back here, and we keep our mounds tarped at all times unless they're actually being used. And the reason we keep the, the mounds tarped is we're trying to maintain that moisture level um, all the time. We don't want that clay to dry out and become real cracked and crumbly. That's when you get your really big holes and really bad uh, landing areas. So, as you can see, we're, we're constantly adding moisture and maintaining that moisture in that clay so that it stays pliable, not slippery, but still pliable um, so the, the, the player spikes will go in and come back out and uh, without leaving a big hole. So once it gets that graded back out and tamped, we're going to add a little bit more again just to make sure we've got the grade exactly where we want it. Again, we never want to add too much. The standard rule on a mound is it drops one inch per foot as you go down your mound for seven feet. So that the bottom of my mound is seven inches lower than the actual pitching rubber itself. Um, and the way they measure it, they come out six inches in front of your rubber, that's flat. And then after the first six inches, every foot thereafter drops one inch. And you can literally take a string line and, and measure that so that the player's um, foot lands in the same area all the time. Once we've compacted it, again we come back and, and scrape out any excess clay to make sure that we're not getting any high areas in this in this mound area. Once it's re-tamped, 
the excess clay is removed. And then we simply rake back over our conditioner, whether it be calcite clay, vitrified clay, whatever we're using, and, and cover those areas back up. Again, trying to maintain that moisture that's in that clay um, as a constant. Our conditioner pretty much acts like an insulation barrier and really holds that moisture in uh, during the day game or, or any time when you've got your mounds uncovered. So again, the key is, is cover your mounds back up when, you're not, when they're not in use and really monitor the amount of moisture you're adding to those areas and keep them um, not slippery and soft, but you want to keep them nice and moist and pliable so that the player's spikes will go in without shifting.